It is the year 2056. The world is ruled by a ruthless dictator known as the governor. He has gripped the people in fear, and faith has been forgotten. Until the word of God was found, and its message spread rapidly through the world. Now, faith has been spreading, and hope rises among the masses, as God begins to do extraordinary things through ordinary people. Citizens, I bring you greetings. I am the Seeker. Have you lost faith? Do you feel that this is all that there is and nothing more? I have good news. There is hope. Watch, listen, and understand as I show you stories about how God is real. And when you put your faith in Him, it can change the world. You are the one they call Seeker. I am. You are? I am Noah Bishop. And I have been watching your stories of faith, and I believe I have one. May I share it? Yes, please sit. Oh, please state your name and tell us what you do. Oh, well, my name is Noah Bishop, and I used to work at the factory but I did not get along with the governor at all. I uh, thought that the world was going in the wrong direction. So I uh, took my family and left. Why would you do that? Because God told me so, that he had other plans for me. So you've heard the voice of God? Oh, very clearly. And once God has spoken, you listen. It's not easy. I was mocked and ridiculed, told I was crazy to take my family and leave something so secure. So how did that affect your wife and children? They never left my side. They followed God's leading. It was hard. I don't mind being mocked and made fun of, but when someone threatens your wife and children, it's tough. So why did you stay with that? I mean, why did you stay and put up with it? Because it's better to obey God than fear men. What can they do? And it's so wonderful to be just a small part of God's extraordinary plan. And I knew God would come through. I just knew it. So what did God want you to do next? Well, that's the amazing part. He wanted me to build a shelter. It was to be an armored resistance cover, or what I like to call the Ark. I was not a planner seeker. I'm just a practical man. I just build what someone tells me to build. But this time, it was God himself who gave me the idea. These look amazing. I can't believe you've never drawn before. I never even tried. But once God gives you an idea, you don't stop. These plans are incredible. You should see them in person. God gave me the idea. He made rooms for everything, and each room is unique and different. How long did this take you to build? Years, many years. Well, how did the governor not find out? <clears throat> because God told me to build it under the city, in the sewers. It must have been disgusting. Oh yes, but I was doing something for God, so I didn't mind it. I just did what I was told to do and did it. And and besides that, you can see, material things don't matter to me. So, how did people react to you? They made fun of me. They laughed. They called me the crazy man under the street. But it never caused me to ever waver in my mission. Well, if people never took you seriously, and you never had any money, then how did you get all the supplies? God provided. I found everything I ever needed, whether it was tools, metal, what? Even the smallest little screws. Did God ever reveal what it is you were building? No. He 
He just told me there was a disaster about to strike, and I needed to be ready. Did he tell you when the disaster was going to be? No. I just was told to build it. I never questioned Seeker why or when. I just did what God asked me to do. So, what happened after you finished? I waited. You just waited? Of course. That, what if the governor tried to stop you? What if all that time you spent building was for nothing? I mean, that just seems like a waste of time. It's just insane. Faith is a little bit crazy, and I think that's why God uses our faith. In the end, it's the unexplainable, the things that don't make sense, that really show God. It's less about us and more about Him. But a disaster did happen. Tell us more about that day. Well, it was just another day. I was going through my usual routine, and my wife heard a knock at the door. So I went to it, ready for anything that might happen, whether it was a governor standing at the door trying to stop me or someone needing a friend. Who was it? The children. All of the children of the city were there. How? I don't know. When you're doing things for God, sometimes you just don't ask how. You just accept what he does. And there was room for all of them. More than enough room. He built the ark. He built the rooms. And when the last child had entered, then I shut the door. So you just left the doors open the entire time? It was there for anyone other than the children. No one took the offer. So why children? Because God protects the innocent. He wanted no harm to come to them. Well, then we waited for a brief time. But then somehow I just felt that something was about to happen, that maybe this was the day that I had long waited for. And then we heard the rumble. A rumble? It came from under the city, and the ark shook violently. But no one in the ark was harmed. And then, we heard the sirens going, the sirens are going off. And then something sounded like thunder. And then we heard the buildings crumbling. We heard the wind howling. We heard people screaming. But everyone in the ark was at peace. No one panicked. So you survived the class 10 energy meltdown. No one knew what happened, but it was the main source for the New World Army's power. It was a powerful tool for the governor. Well, according to my research, the, the energy plant wiped out the entire city. I don't know. I have not read much of the news sources. But most people anywhere near the city were wiped out completely, and, and you were in the ark underneath it. I think God was making a point. So how did you know it was safe to come outside? We didn't have a way. We just waited inside the ark, and it was about a month. And I didn't want to harm anyone at all, so I just waited until God told me that it was time to leave. Well, what made you think that? Because God had been leading me this far, and I didn't think he would leave me in the final moment. Eventually, we heard a knock at the door, and it was a man in a radiation suit to tell us that we were the only thing left standing. Did he work for the governor? No, he was a member of the resistance, and he told us that the area, well, or what was left of the area, was now safe to come out. But God had saved every one of us. I'm listening to you. I see you. This is all just so hard to believe. It's just so unbelievable. Well, that's what God does. He does the impossible and creates the unbelievable. Keep your faith in him. He will never let you down. Thank you for your story. Oh, by the way, they can keep the plans. I don't need them anymore. Let them be a reminder of what God has done and what he can do for you. Thank you. Have faith, Seeker. Keep it tight. Let it be your foundation. Citizens, this is The Seeker. As hard as it is to believe, that story is true. It shows what God can do when we have firm, unwavering faith. One man listened and obeyed. He obeyed no matter what anyone said or what he saw. He obeyed because he believed and had faith in God. Do the same. Hold tight to your faith. 
God is real. Hope is spreading. This is The Seeker. We just saw in this episode that Noah was building this underground subterranean bunker because God told him to. This obedience and faith is what saved so many people. But here he is just building and building this thing when there was no sign of anything bad happening. Everyone else thought he was crazy and obsessed with this thing. They would tell him to just quit it or knock it off. But his faith in God was too strong. He was going to accomplish what God told him to do, no matter what other people said. We find the real story of Noah in Genesis 6 and 7. Many of you have heard the story of the flood before, but if you haven't, here's what happened really quick. The Bible says that in that time, everyone was evil and wicked, and God was saddened by how the people had become. It says that his, his heart was pained. But he found favor with this one guy named Noah, who was the best person alive at the time. God told him to, to build this ark, this giant boat, because the whole earth would be flooded. And the only ones who would be saved was Noah's family and two of every kind of animal. Now, a side note, you might be asking, why, why would God do this? Why would he just send this flood and wipe away all of humanity? The answer is because he loves us so much. There were so many evil people in the world doing so much wrong that he had to wipe them out so that good people could live again without all that evil. So Noah listens to God and he starts to build this ark, even though there's not even a hint of rain or, or storms in the forecast. If you saw that, wouldn't you think he's a little crazy? You're like, Noah, it's sunny out. I don't think God's gonna send a flood and wipe away everybody. But the wicked were still living wicked while Noah stood firm in his faith, even if people thought he was crazy. He kept going and firm faith in God brought him to completing the ark. And soon after the flood came and all that were in the ark were saved because of Noah's firm faith in God that he was able to give the world a second chance apart from all that evil that was happening. Building that ark may have seemed crazy at the time, but it was absolutely necessary in the end. Here's the thing, throughout your life, you're gonna have things that are gonna test your faith. There will be people that will tell you that God isn't real and that you're crazy. Others will ask you why you believe all this stuff. And you'll need to know how to answer them. 1 Peter 3.15 says, Through thick and thin, keep your hearts at attention in your adoration before Christ, your Master. Be ready to speak up and tell anyone who asks why you're living the way you are. And always with the utmost courtesy. Keep a clear conscience before God so that when people throw mud at you, none of it will stick. Now, obviously people aren't gonna throw mud at you. Well, hopefully not. But what that's saying is know why you believe what you believe so that when people ask you, you can tell them. That's part of the reason why you should want to go to church so that you can learn about who God is and what God's done. But also people will challenge what you believe if they don't believe it. Is your faith going to be strong enough? Are you going to trust God enough to not be swayed by it? Like someone coming up to you and being like, Hey man, God's not really real. Hopefully you're not like, Oh my gosh, what? He's not real? Oh man, what, what, what am I going to do? Hopefully your faith will be firm and strong. James 1, 2 through 3 says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. So my prayer for you is that your faith will grow so strong that nothing can move you from it. Not a person, not a bad life event, nothing. I pray that you will grow in the confidence of God and that your faith will be so firm that it cannot be shaken.